Hey, welcome back, guys. Got some more questions to answer today, so let's get started. Um, first up, we've got a question about what air pressures I use when spraying. So I use a different air pressure when I'm working with guns and, uh, and airbrushes. Um, they're, they're not the same, basically. So you got to understand that with a gun, usually it'll have specifications, and those specifications are designed to be the air pressure at the nozzle. And a lot of guns don't measure the air pressure at the nozzle. Some of them do, and they have digital readouts on the handle. Those tend to be very expensive. I can't afford those. Um, so what I do is I put a regulator right at the base of the gun, and I tend to set that to about 26 PSI, maybe 30. So I'm looking for somewhere in the, there's a little bit of pressure drop as you go through anything, um, for example, a hose or the gun. That's as close as I can get is putting that, uh, that regulator at the bottom of the gun. So I try, tend to set that so that I'm getting somewhere in the mid twenties at the nozzle. That's my goal. If you're using a regulator on your compressor and then you have a really long hose, you're going to need to compensate for that because the pressure will drop over the length of the hose. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you're trying to pick a pressure to spray at, do something that, that feels good. Like you'll notice if your pressure is too low, your gun's going to kind of spit and you're going to get a bit of a stippled look. If it's too high, you're going to get just a ton of mist in the air and you're really not going to be transferring paint efficiently onto your project. And it's probably not going to come out very good. It might even blow the paint around a little bit. But what I tend to do, like I said, is I set my pressure at about 26, sometimes up to 30 PSI at the base of the gun. When I would go with airbrushes, I do things a little bit differently. Airbrushes, a lot of, in a lot of cases, they recommend about 45 PSI. I like to go 40-ish, maybe even as low as 35 sometimes, particularly when I'm spraying on hard surfaces. Um, you may have noticed if you're trying to learn how to airbrush that you can blow your paint around if you're not careful. Uh, it's been a long time since I've really run into that, but when I use a 40, 40 PSI, air approximately and I'm careful I don't have that problem now if you start to up your air pressure and you thin your paint a lot then you're gonna run into that problem um, conversely if you let your air pressure go too low like when I start spraying around 35 I run into a little bit more tip dry so I have to be conscious of that and I have to make sure I'm cleaning the tip of my airbrush relatively frequently if I'm spraying something like a t-shirt then I don't really have to worry about the paint dispersing like that right it's a porous surface it's going to absorb it i've seen guys use up to like 70 psi on that with fairly thin paint and they can pull some wicked detail doing that it's not something i do frequently but when you're painting a more porous surface that's going to soak in that paint and not you know have you worrying about dispersing it then you can up your pressure a little bit for that next we've got somebody asking about uh, doing metal art on a guitar so some of you might not be familiar with my metal art. I know I've only put, posted a few videos about it, you know, now and then. But I do this, uh, this basically aluminum art, or steel occasionally, but mostly aluminum. It's kind of holographic. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I like it. Um, putting it on a guitar would be as difficult as getting a metal top guitar. That's about it. It can be done on any metal. So this guy's asking if it's possible to do that. Yes, it's possible. You could even do it on, for example, a guitar with a metal pick guard. So for this guitar, I cut a custom aluminum pick guard, but it's diamond plate, so I didn't do it on there. Uh, but if I were doing just like a straight aluminum pick guard, there's no reason that that couldn't be done in those circumstances. Or if you were to do a guitar with a metal top. I don't really build guitars per se, so I've never made one with a metal top. But uh, if I did, I would strongly consider doing a metal art style thing on there. What do we got last here? One more for today. Oh, here's a good one. What's your favorite kind of paint? So I'll ask you guys this as well. Um, it's, that's tough. My favorite kind of paint, well, my favorite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like composition for paint is probably polyurethane. I find it to be the most versatile. And my favorite kind has gotta be candy. Candy paints give you a lot of options for some real cool stuff because of how the light passes through them, will reflect off whatever's behind them and come through again. So they give you crazy amounts of depth. Um, they're what's used for a lot of metal art related stuff. They're what's used for true fire techniques and really just like awesome accenting work in, uh, in your artwork can be done with white and candies and you can really get something with 
an interesting depth and a really cool effect that you couldn't necessarily get just with like semi-transparent paints. So that's probably my favorite, uh, the PPG or House of Color or DNA candies. Those are probably the ones that I would go to. Uh, and I, let, I really find those uh, to be awesome paints, basically. So how about you guys? What's your favorite kind of paint? Do you like, you like acrylics? Are you an, an oil brush painter? You like polyester? I won't judge you. Well, I might judge you, but I won't tell you I'm judging you. So let me know what your favorite kind of paint is in the comment section below. Don't forget to ask your questions so that I can keep this video series going. It's it's been going well so far, I think. What is this, episode nine or something like that? So clearly you guys have lots of questions and I'm happy to answer them. And I think that the videos allow me to do that pretty well, hopefully. So keep them coming. Thanks for watching. And uh, yep, we'll call that a wrap. See you next time.